Hi Mr. Anton Barabas, and it is a great pleasure and honor to interview you today. Initially, I would like to ask you to tell us about your experiences under a socialist regime. Thank you very much and the pleasure and honor are mine. I would like to begin by saying that I spent my early childhood, from birth up to the age of 12, in Czechoslovakia, a socialist country that was one of the satellite nations of the communist Soviet Union at the time. Life under socialism differed significantly from the common perceptions shaped by literature or films. Historical narratives are often influenced by the perspective of the prevailing powers or tailored to suit contemporary governance. In this video, I aim to share my authentic experiences of living in a developing socialist nation. I use the term developing because, similar to any aspect of creation, economic and political systems require nurturing and cultivation to flourish and ultimately benefit society. My time in socialist Czechoslovakia during the 1960s has provided me with a unique perspective on the realities and intricacies of living in a socialist society. Despite the often polarized and distorted narrative surrounding socialism, it is crucial to delve into the nuances of this socio-political system to grasp both its strengths and shortcomings. Here I would like to reflect on my personal experiences in socialist Czechoslovakia, delving into the core tenets of socialism such as social responsibility, education, healthcare, public safety, and employment within this specific context. Education under socialism prioritizes a holistic curriculum that covers a wide and deep range of scholastic subjects. In my case when I was in the fifth grade of the elementary school, I had mathematics, geometry, art, history, music, chemistry, zoology, botany, geography, astronomy, physics, handcrafts, and physical education. This approach aimed to provide students with a well-rounded education and diverse skill set. We also had integrated practical learning, such as school trips to help in farming and cleaning the streets. These activities not only contributed to community development but also instilled values of social responsibility and civic engagement among students. Education was accessible to all, with free schooling from elementary to higher levels. This ensured that education was not a privilege but a fundamental right for every individual. When I arrived in the United States, I was totally dismayed and bored by the classes in the fifth grade there because for example they offered subjects such as social studies and science, which consisted a little bit of this and a little of that without cohesion and application. My only problem at that time was the English language. So every day after school I would go to a library and saturate my mind with English. At the end of the fifth grade we, the students, had to give a presentation in the science class. When I gave my presentation, the students were confounded and the person in the class who understood what I was talking about and who was able to ask me any questions was our teacher. Nevertheless, there were other social and economic benefits I experienced in socialist Czechoslovakia, which I would like to mention here. My country at that time prioritized universal health care, providing free medical services to all citizens. This ensured that health care was not contingent on one's ability to pay but it was a basic entitlement for all. Regarding the public safety, the crime rate was near zero, not only due to a common sense of social responsibility among people, but also due to a swift and effective police system. All public placed were patrolled by uniformed as well as undercover police officers. Anyone visiting another town or city for more than 24 hours, had to register at the local police station say the purpose and duration of the visit. This was one of the precautionary measures to prevent any type of crime or violence. In socialist Czechoslovakia, the government guaranteed employment for all citizens, ensuring that everyone had a job and contributed to the economy and society. One of the significant achievements of socialism was the increased participation of women in the workforce. Women were encouraged to pursue careers and were provided equal opportunities for employment. Socialist policies aimed to eradicate traditional gender roles and promote the idea of gender equality in the workplace. This led to a higher representation of women in various professions and sectors of the economy. In socialist Czechoslovakia, 
employment was considered a fundamental obligation for citizens. While it was not explicitly stated as mandatory in the sense of facing legal penalties for being unemployed, the socialist regime had policies in place to ensure full employment and encourage participation in the workforce. The state assisted citizens in finding jobs relevant with their competencies and also provided required training. For individuals who were unable to work due to disability, illness, or other valid reasons, social welfare systems were in place to provide support. This could include disability benefits, health care services, or other forms of assistance to ensure basic needs were met. While there wasn't a strict legal requirement to work, there was societal pressure and cultural norms that encouraged individuals to participate in the workforce. Being unemployed or not actively seeking employment could lead to social stigma and disapproval from the community. Often, the unemployed were labeled as public nuisance and the state would assign them to community service or public works projects as a form of contribution to society or they would be sent to rehabilitation centers. This helped maintain a sense of social responsibility and involvement. Housing in those days in socialist Czechoslovakia was affordable to anyone. If anyone had a problem with finding an apartment or even a house to buy, the state would help them. If people could not make payments because of a disability, the state welfare system would cover the costs. However, people who did not want to work would not receive any welfare benefits and treated differently. Could you please tell us about some negative experiences you had while living in socialist Czechoslovakia? As Dr. Albert Einstein once said, everything is relative, and everything can be good or bad depending on how we look at it. In my opinion, one of the biggest mistakes of socialism was its suppression of spiritual growth. Under socialism religions were disdained and any form of spirituality was considered as a superstition. To me the spiritual growth has always been very important. However, even the churches or organized religions have always been doing the same thing, stifling the individual spiritual growth. Socialism has also been criticized for limiting the freedom of speech. Yet, these limits have always existed throughout the world depending on the governance, culture and religion. Socialism has also been irrevocably criticized for its censorship of an access to information. Despite these apparent deficiencies of socialism, which I think can be remedied, we should focus on the positive aspects of socialism which we should address and apply in today's world full of greedy economic exploitation, wide range of crime, sexual and economic exploitation of women, child abuse, environmental pollution, and many others. Moreover, I would like to point out to people that the countries such as Cuba and Venezuela today are not an example of any socialism. They are examples of capitalist dictatorship where a handful of wealthy people rule. Thank you very much, Mr. Garabas, and also thank you the viewers for your time. If you liked or found this video interesting and informative, please write any comments or questions below, click on like and subscribe to our channel where you will always find a variety of exciting and informative videos that are intended not only to expand your knowledge, but also help you be happier and more successful in your life.